Good morning, matandang umaga. I am Ela Gutierrez from the Asian Institute of Management, Dr. Andrew Elfan Center for Tourism. And on behalf of my co-authors, Dr. Marijal Bautista of Central Luzon State University and Mrs. Jean Clarice Carlos of the Philippine Institute of Development Studies, um, allow me to present to you our recently conducted research titled Gendering the Informal Tourism Sector Towards Inclusive and Sustainable Growth, the Case Study of Boracay Island. So allow me, allow me to begin by providing a brief background on our research. Um, a few things that I'd like to point out. First is um, the recognition of the importance of the Philippine tourism industry in the larger Philippine economy, specifically against the backdrop of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And within the tourism industry, we've noticed the um, dominance of women in the tourism workforce, as well as the prevalence of the informal tourism workers in, within the sector. Hence, um, this study is focused on looking at the vulnerability or the presence of women informal workers in the Philippine tourism industry by specifically looking at the case of the Boracay Island, where about 19,000 informal workers are operating in. And to do that, um, we posed the main question on how are women involved in the informal tourism economy in Boracay Island? And to answer this main research question, we posed three key sub-questions. First, looking at the conditions of women as informal tourism workers, looking at what are their challenges, their issues um, in participating in the informal tourism economy. Second, we are also looking at some of the existing national and regional frameworks governing um, the participation of women and the informal economy and tourism. And finally, we want to look at how we can use the data from this research to help or to assist in creating policies or initiatives that could empower women in the informal tourism sector. Um, and to do that, um, we've specifically enumerated some research objectives. First, we wanted to map out the roles of women in the informal tourism workers, meaning to look at where they work, what kind of work are they engaged in. Second, again, as mentioned, we're looking at some of the challenges and issues that they face um, participating in the industry. We also want to survey some of the local, national, and regional policy environments where they operate in. And finally, because there's dearth or like scant research on this aspect, we want this research to be. Um, to be, um, to be able to create some case studies or strategies that could be replicated across the um, APEC region. And to do that, um, we've used this framework following Dugrid and Weber, which looks at three aspects of women's empowerment or women's engagement. Basically, we look at the macro, meso, and micro dimensions. That is, we look at first at the macro level, how do women participate outside um, within their communities and societies. At the meso level, we look at how women engage with other women within um, their communities. And finally, also we look at the micro dimension or the, at the individual level, how are their experiences um, is, actually, um, is actually represented in the sector. And we operationalized it or adopted it within our study um, by looking at, at the macro level, we look at some of the policies, the initiatives, and frameworks that govern their participation. From here, we consult national government agencies to look at um, the overall or general framework of women's involvement. In terms of the meso level, we tried to look at some of, um, of women's engagement at the local level, meaning we tapped into the resources of the um, local government unit governing Malay and Boracay Island. And then finally, in the micro dimension, we looked at the experiences of women individually. So um, we interviewed and engaged women in focus group discussions to look at their experiences um, as individuals working for the industry. And to do that, our methodology is designed into three phases. First, we look at following again our framework. First, we looked at the meso level. We uh, engaged with the local government unit um, the tourism officers, the uh, municipal barangay officials in Boracay Island, Malay. And then at the second phase, we looked at the experiences of women and formal workers. So we went um, into a field work in Boracay Island itself, interviewed some women who were working in the souvenir, food and beverage, excursion and services sectors. And then finally, the phase three, we look at the national level 
um, what are the policies and, and um, existing strategies at the national government level from the Department of Tourism, from the Philippine um, Commission on Women and other related agencies to look at how women are actually um, participating at the macro level. And following this, I'd we'd like to highlight or I'd like to highlight some key findings um, that I think would be a great um, springboard to further discussions and to women in the informal sector. So first, um, we identified um, women's engagement across souvenir, food beverages, excursion services, and then emerging tourism segment or subsectors. Um, basically, souvenirs, these are women who are working um, to sell bracelets, necklaces, and some souvenir items. Food and beverages, these are women who work as street vendors and food marketers in the island. Excursions, these are marketers, those that promote or advertise certain um, trips within Boracay. Services, this include therapists, care braiders, um, working in the industry. And we've um, recognized in doing the fieldwork, um, an emerging tourism segment. These are people who sell beach mats. Um, after the 25 plus 5 easement in the Boracay Island. So a good thing to look at when we, when we surveyed the informal um, tourism industry in Boracay is that they have been organized in associations. Um, they're not necessarily um, um, all registered within the government, but they do belong, some of them or most of them belong in specific tourism organizations such as um, there's one for souvenirs, there's one for excursions, for services. However, for food and beverage and the emerging tourism segment, they are still not part of any um, tourism-related associations that is um, organized by the government. And as you can see here, um, there's also a range of income. They could be daily wage, commission-based. Some of them, most of them are highly dependent on the seasonality of tourism activities in the island. Now let's look at first some of the challenges and issues they face. Um, across all women workers in, in all subsectors that we've looked at, most of the issues that they face re, uh, relate to the seasonality of demand for tourism activities because we know that tourism in the island is very seasonal. So basically that's one of the main challenges that they face. Another common characteristic or issue that they face is in terms of their competition with other informal workers and also with formal tourism establishments. Um, and some issues of sexual harassment or gender-based um, um, treatment um, has been more observed in the services sector and in meaning for, mass for massage therapists and hair breeders and in the emerging tourism segment who are the beach mat vendors. Um, now, in terms of their relationship with the government, since food, food and beverage and the emerging tourism segment are not organized in associations, they have little to no interaction with the government. However, for the souvenir excursion and services subsectors, um, they did mention that government's programs and campaigns have been um, at least helpful for them. And they have um, a working relationship um, with the local government and the national government in that sense. Um, in relation to that, looking at their relationship with their own associations, again, excluding the food and beverage and the beach mat vendors who are not part of any organizations, um, generally, the other subsectors are generally satisfied with their membership. Um, some of the, some of the um, benefits that they did mention include um, their representation with the government, include um, um, some benefits in terms of when there's... Um, uh, funding from the government, they do receive that, and some level of organization within the informal workers themselves. And now when we ask them about their perception of the formal economy, um, across all sectors, they did express some desire or some level of desire to be included in the formal economy, specifically um, for the purposes of having employee benefits and some level of security in terms of economic involvement. So what we can presume is that across all of these sectors, all the women and formal workers have some level of desire to be integrated into the formal tourism economy um, for some way or another. And um, given um, the time, the limited time that we have, um, there's still obviously a lot of nuances that we want to talk about. Um, let me go through some of the key recommendations or key aspects that we want to um, promote in this research. 
first, um, in terms of the macro level, looking at um, looking at the region, uh, the more macro aspect of women's involvement, um, some of the key recommendations that were proposed by our um, key informants as well include education and training and capacity building. They did mention um, aspects of, for example, financial literacy for women that still needs to be created because these informal workers, they earn a lot of money, but then these are seasonal. So um, financial literacy is one of the key aspects that they hope um, would be provided by the government. Second, in terms of capacity building, um, they did have a sense of um, wanting to be um, employed in Boracay Island so that um, people from other parts of Calibo or from other parts of, of the island, um, they wanted to benefit themselves from the tourism activities. So that's what they wanted to focus on. So that comes with the um, establishment of Malay colleges to create a homegrown um, tourism employees um, to, to um, supply in the, in the demands for employment in the Boracay Island. Um, another thing that um, was mentioned at the macro level is the creation of GAD or Gender and Development Indicators for Tourism. Um, while there are existing indicators, they hope that um, they were hoping to tailor fit it into tourism so that they could apply it more for monitoring and implementation of certain projects. And again, they highlighted the importance of community organizing and the involvement of the academe in making sure that um, these mechanisms are in place to capacitate more women to be integrated into the formal tourism economy. Now, when we look at some of the challenges and issues that women face in the informal economy or at the meso level, um, of course, one of the key things that they mentioned is the presence still of sexual harassment. So um, one of the key recommendations that were proposed in the study is the creation of a grievance committee wherein these women could feel comfortable in actually reporting these kinds of cases um, in, in, with the authority. Um, and of course, part and parcel of this is the involvement of the private sector um, to help ensure that women are actually protected despite them being in the informal economy. And finally, in terms of their involvement as women, as individuals, again, um, similar at the macro level, they did cite um, the need for more empowerment training and gender sensitivity training. Again, this is not just for women, but for men as well. And um, of course, the creation of safety nets, even if um, given the seasonality of tourism activities um, in Boracay. So overall, what our research basically promotes is the idea that for us to achieve empowerment or for women informal workers to be empowered in Boracay, it takes a multi-stakeholder um, approach, a collaborative approach across different members of the tourism sector, as well as both men and women. Um, it takes two to tango, basically. So um, a more collaborative approach is definitely important and a multi-stakeholder approach is critical in ensuring this. And with that, I think that ends my presentation. Thank you very much, maraming salamat, and we look forward to your questions um, or any concerns that could help us elaborate our research further. Maraming salamat.